G'day and welcome back to Project 200. Today's video is going to be a little bit different to usual because most of it at least will not be about accessories actually fitted to the vehicle. Recovery equipment is an essential part of a touring setup. Even if you don't go looking for trouble, there's a very good chance that you or someone you're travelling with will need recovering at some stage. Now what I'm not going to do is to cover the use of recovery equipment. Making a mistake can have fatal consequences, so if you're unsure about the correct recovery techniques, then I strongly recommend you attend a proper training course provided by a four-wheel drive club or another provider. Before I get started, there's one aspect of recovery equipment that causes a lot of confusion, strength ratings. The issue stems from the fact that some components, such as straps and soft shackles, are rated with a braking strength, while other components, such as recovery points and bow shackles, are rated with a working load limit, or a WLL, and there's a big difference between the two. A working load limit incorporates a safety factor, typically 5 or 6 to 1. This means the braking strength is 5 to 6 times the working load limit. Practically, this means a recovery point or a shackle with a 5 tonne working load limit is actually much stronger than a snatch strap, for example, rated at 8 tonnes. The first items of equipment to look at are the recovery points on the vehicle itself. While the 200 comes equipped with factory tow points, they're really only designed for static loads, not for the much larger forces that are imposed by snatching. The solution for the front end is to install properly rated recovery points, such as these ones. They bolt onto the chassis rails in place of the factory tow points. At the rear, I've already got a replacement bar, which incorporates recovery points. But if you don't, then I'd suggest purchasing a rated recovery point for installation into the factory tow hitch receiver. The next must-have accessories are shackles. Either familiar rated bow shackles, like these ones, or soft shackles, like these ones. Steel shackles have long been the item of choice, and they're very durable. However, they can also turn into lethal missiles if something they're attached to fails. For this reason, I've mostly switched to the soft shackles with a 14 tonne braking strength. They can be used with winches, tow straps and snatch straps. An electric winch can be a wise addition to your vehicle, particularly if you travel alone. Make sure you choose a reputable brand with sufficient capacity to recover your vehicle and trailer if you're towing. If you do have an electric winch, then a must-have accessory is a snatch block. These can be used to double the capacity of your winch or also to redirect the winch cable. You'll also need a tree trunk protector to attach the winch cable to a tree or another suitable anchor. A winch extension strap or cable can be very useful if there are no anchors within range of your winch. I've personally got a 30 metre webbing style strap, but Dyneema cables are also available now, which take up less space and have similar strength ratings. A great piece of passive recovery equipment is a set of recovery treads, such as these Max Tracks. They can be very effective for self-recovery, particularly in mud and sand, and much safer and easier on your vehicle than winching or snatching. I've fabricated a bracket to hold mine onto the spare tyre, but there are also roof rack brackets and several other storage options available. For recovering another vehicle, the next piece of must-have recovery equipment to look at is a good old snatch strap. As a general rule of thumb, look for one with at least an 8 ton rating, or higher if you're going to be towing. Choosing a snatch strap should not be taken lightly. Their elastic nature means breakage can be extremely dangerous, so avoid no-name brands. The Project 200 website has some links to independent testing of various straps, and I'll add more links as more tests are done in the future. Finally, a few important safety tips to keep in mind. There have been many fatalities and injuries resulting from poor techniques and failed equipment. Always use proper recovery points and quality rated equipment. Saving $20 is not worth a life. Whenever you're recovering a vehicle, be it with a winch, strap or cable, always use at least one dampening device, such as this one, and ensure that everybody stands well clear of the area. A snatch recovery in particular can be very dangerous. Try passive techniques such as max tracks before you resort to snatching, especially if the vehicle is stuck in deep sand or mud. And last but not least, remember that the biggest enemy of synthetic straps and cables is UV light. Keep them out of the sun to maintain their strength. There is a lot more information, including links to products and test results at project200.com.au. See you next time.